In this video, I'm going to be showing you Vectorshift, which is a no-code AI automation platform. There are a ton of different use cases in here, from agents to automations to chatbots, all the way through to assistants that are enterprise ready. These can be for professional use cases. These can be personal use cases, things like content generation, internal company search, co-pilots. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through exactly on how you can get started with building pipelines to build out whether it's automations, chatbots, or really whatever you can imagine on their platform. So first thing that you can do is you can make a free account on Vectorshift. There's a ton of capabilities that you'll see on the left-hand sidebar here. First, I'm gonna show you pipeline. Pipelines are arguably at the heart of Vectorshift. And what you can do, if I just click this simple chatbot template, at its core, what it allows you to do is you have these nodes that you can drag onto the screen here. Let's say you have a knowledge base that you wanna use. You can drag this here, and then you can ultimately wire it up. The cool thing with this is you can leverage a ton of different LLMS, anything from OpenAI, Anthropic, Llama, Google, AWS models, Perplexity, and you can just start building. You don't even necessarily need to do this in a successive order. Let's say we wanna use Perplexity because maybe we wanna query something like the internet. But for instance, let's just say I want the workflow to trigger a draft within my email. I can do that as well. Now, one of the most powerful features of this are the integrations here. There's everything from GitHub through to Slack, through the Google Suite, whether it's Gmail, Gcal, Google Docs. You can use things like Google Docs as knowledge sources if you'd like, or you can have them perform certain actions. You can also use something like Gmail, say if I want to trigger it and make a draft email or actually send an email out, you can build out workflows from that. You, you can also even reference things like what you have in Notion or whether you want to use Pinecone or Postgres. There's really quite a comprehensive suite in terms of different capabilities and integrations that you can leverage within whatever you want to build. This could be a chatbot use case. This could be an automation. And you can build all of the different, whether it's automations, chatbots, all within this interface here. In terms of the types of data that you can load in, you can have structured or unstructured data, anything from YouTube to Wikipedia, CSVs. You can even query external APIs if you'd like. You can really do just about anything. And that's something that I really want to emphasize with this platform is this isn't necessarily for people that don't know how to code. This can absolutely be for developers, even though you don't need to write out any code. You can build it out in a way where you can leverage it within your application. And that's another thing that I wanted to touch on is depending on what you build with the pipelines, you can also connect to an external API as well. Now there is the ability to even generate images. So say if you want to generate an image with Dolly 3, you can have that be an output. You do have the ability to have text to speech from things like Eleven Labs, or you can even leverage the vision capability of some of the popular models, whether it's GPT-4, Anthropic series of models, or the Gemini series of models as well. Now in this example, you can really put anything within the system message. Now to deploy it, once you've set up whatever you want to set up, you do have the ability to run this just like you would a chatbot. So if I just say something like hello world, and I submit that, you'll see it work through the node. So you can see the runtime, you can see the number of AI credits that it costs, and then you'll see the response there. And the nice thing with this is once you're ready to export this, so you can export it as an automation or a chatbot or even a form if you'd like. So let's say I want this to be a chatbot and I want to call it example bot. I can just create the chatbot. And then I have this interface here where I can just start to configure it. So let's say I don't want voice messages. I can do that. I can change the welcome header. So instead of it saying vector shift, you can have this be whatever you want. I can put in developers digest. You can also shrink and change the image and you can do this all without code. If you go to export, once you're done, you do have the ability to include it within an iframe or you could just add it within the script tags. Now you also have the ability to connect this from Slack. Alternatively, if you want to just run this from the environment of wherever you're building out your application, you can include it by just copying, whether it's the Python and JavaScript or just take the curl request. And this is a good example where you could put it in ChatGPT and really convert it to whatever language you might be working in. So the one thing to note is you will have to get an API key if you're going the route of the API export, but you'll be able to find that right within the interface. So let's go back and let's actually build one out completely from scratch. We'll just call this developers digest example. So within here, so the first node that we're going to drag onto the screen is just the input. So you can think of this as what might be a user message. You also have the ability to change the type. So say if you want to have multiple inputs, you can do that as well. So say if you have a form or something that might have multiple inputs, depending on the fields that there are, you can do that. 
upload audio or files as well. And in this case, we're just going to have one input. From there, what we're going to do is we're just going to select the LLM that we're going to be using. In this case, I'm going to drag over Anthropic. You have the option to select the model here, and I'm just going to click Sonnet 3.5 here. Once you have that, what you can do is if you want to reference the variable in the other nodes that are within your graph here, is you can just use double curly braces, and then you can specify the name of the field that you want to reference. Well, in this case, let's say I want to reference input one field. I can just reference that here. And you can also name it something and give the prompt some further context. You could say something like here is my input. Now using XML tags can be useful as well. So if you just say like user input here and then user input, that could be a strategy. You don't necessarily need to do that. That has been an anecdote that I've heard that some people have had success with. Just something to consider. Now the other thing with this is you can just specify what you want it to be. You could say something like this is the user's question or you could say something like the user query to wire this up is we can just connect this input here and we'll see that now we have this blue dot here that connects to this input. Now the other thing that you might potentially want to do is you might want to name this something a bit more descriptive. So you could name this something like user question if you'd like and then also within here you're creating the query you could also specify something like user question. Now let's just go back to the general here and we'll just put in an output. So this is going to be very similar to the first example that I showed you. Now within the output, you could just go ahead and run it at this point. This is going to be a working chatbot. And here, if I just deploy this, I go and run this, I'll submit that. We see that it will go through the LLM. There we go. We have the working example. Now that's not really exactly an interesting use case, right? This is essentially something like akin to a GPT wrapper, or in this case, an anthropic wrapper. I'm going to show you the Google Docs integration. And the reason why I think this is an interesting use case is you could create this graph and then you could hand this off to someone. And so long as they know something like Google Docs is they could feed in the context that would ultimately power the knowledge base of this particular workflow. That could be a chatbot or it could be used in an automation or what have you. All that you need to do is work through the signup flow to begin to add in the integration. Once you're all logged in, what you can do here is you have the ability to search the docs. You can search through all of the different Google docs that you have, or you can load the particular context of one particular Google doc. Let's just say I want to read a Google doc. You can go and you can click configure. Once your account is synced, as soon as you create new files on Google docs, you'll be able to easily integrate them right within the interface here. In this case, I'm just gonna select one file that I have here and we're gonna save that configuration. Now, now that I have this, I can create a new variable. And if I just call this something like Google Doc, as soon as I have that, I'll have the ability to create this connection here. Now, the one thing that is nice with this is you can have warnings. Now, if you have a node that could run into a potential issue, it's going to show this warning state for you. Where this can be an issue is, let's say you have a Google Doc that is particularly long, you might need to add in a subsequent node that will actually index this document and be able to perform some sort of similarity search or rag functionality to be able to retrieve all of the contents that are within this document. But for this sake, the document that I'm gonna be showing you is relatively short. So in terms of the context length, it should be able to plug in to the LLM that we're using and just about any LLM given that it's a relatively short document. So in this case, I just have some generated data with some specific values that we're gonna be using to query and test this once we finish building out the pipeline. Now that we have the user question as well as the context, here just to reiterate, we're saying you're a helpful assistant that always answers the user's question based on the context, answer in a conversational manner. What we can do here is I'll just put this side by side here. And now that we have this all wired up and we'll just use this for reference. So let's just say, what is the readership for the publication? We'll just query that. And what's going to be neat about this is all of a sudden now we're going to be referencing this live working Google Doc. Now, if we just look through this example, we see a very detailed example. And the thing with this is since we're passing in the entire context of this entire document, it shouldn't be a big surprise that, that we do get a response, but you can see how this could be potentially helpful, right? It has all of the very nuanced metrics that I have within here, the target audience, 78% professional developers, 22% students and hobbyists, 
We can go down here, we can see that it's grown significantly, et cetera, and so on and so forth. Like I said, this isn't true data. This is just some generated data that I used. I generated it with Claude before I built this example. Where this is very powerful is if I just go and paste this out with completely different information. So again, here's another Claude generated set of information without even touching anything. What is the quant script framework? And I send in that query. We see the processing request. And then in short order, we have our answer here. So here we go. I'll scroll to the top here. So quantum script was released September 17th, 2023. And I'm not going to read through this, but you start to get an idea, right? Because as soon as someone has access to just this Google Doc or whatever the integration is, all of a sudden it becomes very easy to maintain, right? You could do an absolute ton with this. Like tomorrow you could literally have an agency where you make these chatbots for automations and you just say quantum script chatbot. I can create that chatbot. You can configure this so you can just change this out to whatever you want. Quantum script change out the logo, right? You could change out the powered by and pretty much everything within here. Now I do want to show you what this looks like. So you can open this up in a full chatbot. You have a URL to vector shift where you'll be able to deploy this. Or alternatively, you can put that script within wherever you're going to be deploying this application. So you could really put this wherever you want, wherever your application lives. You can create a new domain or what have you. And you can pretty much white label basically everything within here. And there is also some other really nice features like you can add in password protection. If I just say test, for instance, and you refresh your application, you'll be able to see that now you have to authenticate. Another cool thing with this that I'm going to be playing around with personally is the ability to leverage this within Gmail. There is a great example in here of how you can generate a draft response. And what you can do with this, just to point you in another direction on the platform here, is you can create these automations. Let's just say I want to create an email automation. You can go over to automations, click new, select Gmail. You can select the event that you want to respond to. Let's say when a user gets a new email, for instance, you can go ahead and decide what trigger you want to have. You can go ahead and select your pipeline, whatever it might be, and you can begin to map out the different fields here. Now, the other great thing with this is you can create automation. Let's just say I wanted to add a type form to my website for collaboration requests or something like that. I could walk through the steps on Typeform, set up a Typeform, and then once it's all set up, I'd have the ability to map the different fields to the particular pipeline workflow that I wanna have run. This could be as soon as you get that Typeform request that it sends to a Slack channel or creates a Discord message, or it could be something like drafting a reply or anything really. The thing to remember with this is since you can now leverage LLMs within this, is you can really steer the direction. For instance, maybe instead of spending so much time combing through emails that are more or less going to be the same types of reply and might just be different variations of common requests, let's just say for my channel and I have a request for a collaboration, generally speaking, the inputs are more or less going to be roughly the same, but there's going to be some information sharing back and forth. You could create a workflow and create a draft or you could actually even trigger to send an email and something like that. And it could really be anything because by being able to leverage the LLM, you can start to steer it in a way that has your tone, your style, as well as some potential information on whatever you want to share. For instance, within here, let's just say you have the particular message that you get from a user. You could have a work through this node. And then from this node, you could specify how you want to have the LLM respond. You can attach that as the body. I just wanted to give you a really quick overview how you can get started with leveraging vector shift and in particular building out a no code chatbot. And if you want to see more of these no code examples, let me know in the comments below. But otherwise, that's it for this video. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.